The Ahmadis have thus always remained loyal and patriotic to their country. Pakistan had never accepted the existence of Ahmadis as Muslims, but Ahmadis stayed loyal to Pakistan. Bhutto, before coming to power, had had a great deal of support from the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, but now he needed no support. He decided to be with the pressure group. He decided not to simply ignore any goodwill that had existed between his government and the Ahmadis. He decided to put aside all contributions made by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in the establishment of Pakistan. All he wanted was to satisfy the pressure groups, be they from within or from abroad. When the constitution was put in place in 1974, a um, closed door session of the National Assembly was called in. And the closed door session means that in which um, the proceedings were, would be held in camera. Press and other publicizing bodies would not be allowed to actually make public the details or the debates that were going inside the assembly. Now that assembly in fact invited um, the Jamaat Ahmadiyya and they invited the third caliph, uh, Hazrat Mirza Nasir Ahmad um, Rahimullah Ta'ala, who in, in fact led the delegation of Jamaat Ahmadiyya into the National Assembly. Uh, he was being accompanied by um, other most prominent scholars of Jamaat Ahmadiyya of that time. And um, in that session of the assembly, a memorandum which was named as Mahzar Nama was prepared. It was quite an extensive document, um, span over over 250 documents, um, and that was filled with um, Quranic injunctions, verses, um, and also ahadis, sayings of um, prominent scholars of Islam, and all were pointing out in one direction that Jamaat Ahmadiyya in fact was and is the true representative of Islamic teachings. However, because it was a politically motivated session of the assembly, they completely ignored that memorandum and those, I would rather use the word illiterate um, politicians who had no business with Islamic teachings, they were then given the power to decide the fate of um, Jamaat Ahmadiyya and they were given the responsibility to come up with the definition of Islam. And so, as we moved into 1974, suddenly there was a great deal of uh, riots and uh, attacks on MDs. At the time, Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto headed it. They were starting to feel the pressure from the mullahs as well. Not traditionally a very extreme man. He was more concerned about being a popular figure. But he uh, knew that this was an issue which w was very important to the mullahs who wielded a great deal of influence. And so he sent the issue to the National Assembly, who uh, uh, called a full assembly in 1974 uh, to see that if Andy should be declared non-Muslim. And uh, this committee was uh, attended uh, by Hazrat Khalifa al Masih III, who represented the Jamaat along with four delegates, which included uh, Hazrat Mazir Tahir Ahmed. And it went on for two weeks. Initially, the, Jama the Jamaat had already sent a two-week, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a, a document in response, which is was this book here, the memorandum. And um, upon this, then the Attorney General and the, um, uh, the the clerics decided to interview the Jamaat over those two weeks. To d and the main issue and um, point of contention was the issue of the finality of the prophethood. Now. What they spread about the Jamaat was that, like I said earlier, these are and these don't believe in the Holy Prophet وسلم, to be the final prophet. Now, the and the Jamaat's view, which was uh, has been a consistent view throughout its uh, existence, throughout its 120-year existence, is that the Holy Prophet وسلم, was the perfect prophet, was the final law-bearing prophet, and he brought the final Sharia, which was uh, the, the Holy Quran which was uh, revealed by God Almighty. And so we uh, don't believe that any new uh, Sharia can come and the only uh, but there is still room for prayer, prophethood in Islam because prophethood is the ultimate uh, gift of Allah, of, of God to his uh, humans. He has sent uh, prophets throughout the history of time to all the uh, countries of the world 
and now suddenly to say that now there's going to be no more prophethood would be deprived the future generations of the great uh, gift from God. But only a prophet from within his faith, from within the teaching could come. And we believe that person to be Hazrat Mizar Ghulam Ahmed of Qadiyan, who made his claim in 1889. And the reason he was the chosen one was because he was the par excellence in devotion and subservience to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. No person before him and no person since has reached that level of devotion. Now the interesting and uh, ironic uh, uh, issue is, is that the majority of non md Muslims, they believe that Jesus Christ salam, is still alive and has been raised to heaven and will return one day to reform Islam. So they believe that prophethood will continue after the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, and they also believe that God Almighty has raised the status of Jesus Christ to a supernatural level, i.e. giving him a life in the, uh, the heavens and that he will return in the latter days. Where, whereas, God forbid, the, the, uh, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, he's only a, a human but Jesus Christ has been uh, given such a grand stage. The more logical and rational, in fact the only rational and logical explanation is that a prophet will come as a new person, an, an, a new human being, who will follow the teachings of Muhammad, the Holy Prophet Wasallam, to the letter. And that is the point of contention, point of logic, that the, uh, the mullahs in Pakistan and even the legislat legis uh, legislature in 1974 gave to the masses that the Andes had the, uh, the wrong view. During this uh, hearing, the Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih Salah Salaam Allah Ta'ala was called and cross-examined. And during this assembly, uh, proceedings of the assembly, uh, a measure nama by the Jamaat was tendered and all the arguments are the reasons or grounds and our uh, beliefs and all other things were were presented to the National Assembly. They did not bother to discuss, discuss all these things. And on one fine morning, they, on the 7th of September, they just passed a declaration without assigning any reasons or questions or answers. So as a result of the um, session, two surprising facts came out. First of all, the National Assembly of Pakistan was the first National Assembly of any country in the world who declared someone as non-Muslim in its constitution. Now second, the politicians who were given the responsibility of defining who was a Muslim and who was a non-Muslim. This is how, for the first time in the history of the world, a constitution forcefully declared a sect something which they were not. Ahmadis were told that they were non-Muslims. Unfortunately, this absurd and hostile constitutional amendment was done not by a dictator, but by a democratically elected government. In 1974, this ordinance was pro pro uh, announced. And when this announcement took place, after that immediately, even before that, there was wave of persecution going on in Pakistan in various places. And uh, during that uh, wave of persecution, which was nationwide, which was very uh, 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 horrible persecution, uh, the result was that a lot of Ahmadis, they had to lay down their lives for the sake of the truth. Normally people are killed for some bad things that they do. But the Ahmadis, they were martyred for the sake of uh, siding with the truth. And many people laid down their lives, their houses were burned, their children were killed, ladies were killed, men were killed. All this persecution went. And it was really a very difficult moment in the history of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. But we firmly believe that uh, Allah Almighty is always there to help the community. And that was a moment we remember very well that the people used to come to Rabwa 
the international headquarter of the community to see hazrat khalifa ul masih salis rahimahullah taala who was the source of all the inspiration and guidance and support to the member of the community people used to come and describe to him that well our relatives have died our houses have been put on fire our business has been stopped and all these things they used to come in a way they were crying and weeping and after seeing the khalifa ul masih they were so much enriched and so much encouraged that when they came out there was always a smile on their face so that sort of encouragement and guidance and support was provided by the institution of khilafat